um, we'll get started. <coughs> uh, this is the first lecture after the one that we had on August 27th. <coughs> I had uh, some sick leave, but um, I expect it will go as normal now the, the, as, as the schedule suggests. <coughs> um, I'm going to hand out this uh, attendance sheet. And yeah, it's not that you have to come every time, but I want to make sure that everyone's on the list, that they're supposed to be on the list. So if you're here, put an X next to your name. And if you're not here on this list, then please write your name in so that I can add you to the list. So just send it around. Um, <coughs> since uh, the last time we had uh, some problem with the exam date and I, I changed where should I put my name it's not on the list yeah yeah so I just just put a check next to your name if it's on the list right. and if it's not on the list then you have to write your name down uh, so there was a problem with the exam date some people had exams on the same day in other classes <coughs> so we have now officially changed the date to December 2nd. Okay, and uh, it should be changing on all the colleges' websites too. So um, I haven't updated the web page yet, but it should be on all of the official lists now that it's December 2nd from at 9 o'clock for four hours. <coughs> okay. Um, and since the last time I had listed uh, all of this, the schedule and the lecture schedule, yeah, it's kind of slow. <coughs> and you see that you were supposed to be working on your your own for chapters uh, three through six, but today we're also <coughs> going to review those chapters. So I'll talk just a little bit about uh, some points in chapters three and four, and then spend more time on chapters five and six. And um, <coughs> I did not receive any uh, individual uh, exercises from you during the break. Nobody sent any. So you don't get any feedback on those. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the required exercise that you must hand in uh, is uh, due, I think it's, it's October 22nd. So you have to get that to me on the morning at, of October 22nd at 9 o'clock in the morning <coughs> so that I can make use of that in the lecture for that day. And then uh, the uh, required exercises are here. So when you go here, you see that's number one. That's the one that's due on October 22nd. <coughs> okay. If you have any questions in between court and in between lectures, you can send me an email, <coughs> or you could stop by my office. Um, let's see. I don't know if you took a look at any of the old videos from last year, but we should be getting new ones this year now as, as well. Um, let's see. Okay, so I thought to start today with a couple comments about the notes from chapters three and four. We did a lot of this in the first lecture, so we're not going to go through it all again. But I just wanted to refresh your memory <coughs> that the information architecture uh, is about organization, labeling, navigation schemes, 
of an information system. And <coughs> what we talk about in the next chapters is uh, first in chapters three and four is about user behavior. But in chapters five and six, it's about organization and labeling. So we're going to start to talk about those concepts in today's lecture. And um, we'll get to um, navigation schemes later. Okay. Yes? Uh, some of the exercises uh, that was made uh, uh, was weekly. Yes. That was also about uh, navigation. Okay. So uh, it seems like uh, you some aren't of the ready for them. Were meant, uh, mm. for maybe later. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Did you try them out or? Yes. Okay. I, uh, I did. Uh, I've okay. Done if you want, <coughs> you can always hand them in later because those are not um, required exercises. But uh, you can, if you have questions about them and you want to get some feedback, you can do it later on. <coughs> in the semester as well. So there's no time limitation on those. <coughs> it was more just to give you something to work on while I was away. So you had some materials to work with. But <coughs> I can understand that you don't have the answers to those questions yet. So, yeah. <coughs> OK. Um, so these are some of the things we talked about in the first lecture, and I'm not going to go through them again. But I wanted to just talk briefly about this uh, chapter three on user needs and behaviors. And one of the main points of this chapter is that people are different, and they have different needs. And when you talk about creating a information architecture for an organization. It's not only about uh, how you would design your own personal site, because that's very subjective. But it's rather about who's going to be using your site and how do you design it more objectively in a, in a structured way so that they can use the site. Um, there's different ways of finding out what the users want. <coughs> One way is to ask them straight out what they want, have surveys or interviews with them. This is uh, hard to do. Uh, first of all, it's expensive because you have to think about how you're going to come in contact with the, the end user, how you're going to get answers from them. And they may not <laughs> actually know the answers to the questions of like what they're going to need. <coughs> So, and, and another way is to use uh, search analytics. And search analytics is uh, something where the site may uh, take um, um, automatic statistics, like who's visited what by the web page, and how long did they spend in the shopping process, and so forth. Uh, usually, the best approach is to use both methods to kind of combine these things. So you can use both. Um, quantitative and qualitative approaches to collecting statistics on what the users need. <coughs> We're going to have chapters later on in the, in the book that talk about how to do this, actually, and what are the different options you have for collecting information from users. <coughs> I wanted to spend a little bit of time on these analogies, uh, because this kind of gives you an indication of what information you're looking for. So we have <coughs> these um, different types of fishing metaphors. The perfect catch is when you're looking for a specific fact. Like uh, um, uh, one thing could be like, uh, when is a movie going to be uh, coming into the theater in Molde? And um, <coughs> there's a specific answer to that. So. Uh, this has a, um, it has a very um, specific hit that uh, will provide the answer to that question. <coughs> Another is called lobster trapping, and that is when maybe you're looking for more than one type of answer. Uh, so you might be trying to learn some information along the way. And uh, <coughs> another is indiscriminate net, net drift netting. 
And this is so, um, <coughs> if you want to find out all the information there is about a particular topic, you're trying to cast the net very wide and collect everything there is to know about a topic. <coughs> and then uh, I've seen you before, Moby Dick, this is about tagging. So if you saw something that you found useful before and you want to be able to locate it again, uh, often you would create a tag so that you can identify where, <coughs> where to find that again. <coughs> if you compare the <coughs> metaphors to uh, information architecture, it's equivalent to what they call the perfect catch is equivalent to known item seeking, when you know exactly what you're looking for. Lobster trapping is equivalent to exploratory seeking, which means that <coughs> you learn something from the process and you take some of what you found as useful. And then uh, maybe this makes you do some other kinds of searching as well. So you might uh, kind of refine your search. Uh, you start out with a broad category, then you search within that category for something else. And then uh, another is uh, indiscriminate net drifting, which is uh, an exhaustive search for everything under a particular topic. And then the other is um, if you need it again, you find it by tagging the information so that you can find it again. <coughs> what I wanted to do is maybe create like a little exercise to give you an idea of how these types of different types of searches are different from each other. So <coughs> I think uh, uh, what we could do is, um, I told you you should have something that you can search like the web with you. It could be your phone or whatever. And so um, maybe there could be a group over here that you, you need to look up um, when is the next Hobbit film showing? And uh, how much does it cost in Molda? So when is the next Hobbit film showing in Molda and how much does it cost to go see it? Okay? The next one. Hobbit. Hobbit, you know, like, like Lord of the Rings, the Hobbit? Uh, yeah. Okay. So find out uh, that and, and write down your steps, what you had to do to find the answer to that. Okay. Um, another one is um, <coughs> uh, the lobster trap thing. Okay, um, maybe, can you be with these guys over here? Sure. Okay. <coughs> I want you to go to skatepro.no and find out a, a board that's right for you. Okay? <coughs> so that means you. You just find, look at their site, you find the skateboard or the board that's right for you, and then you write the steps down of how you got to that answer. Which website was it? It's skatepro.no. Okay. Yeah, start. <laughs> okay, and then all of you guys, you can work on this. Um, if you want, you can join any of these groups. You can decide which group you want to join. Okay. Is that one group? <laughs> this is going to be one group. <laughs> okay. I need you to find a job announcement that's in your field that you could apply for. So you can use um, indiscriminate drifting to find this. Okay. And then just like find something and write down your steps of what you did to find it. Okay. For your question, there's only one answer. <coughs> when is <coughs> when is oh, yeah, a Hobbit playing? 
and how much does it cost? But the steps you can do different, yeah. yeah. Yes, and it has to be the next Hobbit film. When does it come on in the movies in Mulder? And how much does it cost you to go see it? Okay, and you can find this on their site, but you write down the steps you took to find it, okay? How you how you came to your answer? All right. Yeah. So like, if you picked something, I don't care. You, there's no right answer about which one you pick, but how did you decide? Oh. Okay. Yeah. He should be able to help you with the Norwegian because you don't understand oh, yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> no, the point is that uh, in this way, I don't want to see the uh, next words appear. Who is it, you know? Yeah. Come on. Oh, come on, the film, yeah. All right.
Okay, are you guys done? Okay. Okay, so <coughs> you guys, I know you're not done. Okay, I'm asking these guys. Okay, okay. Uh, so what were the steps you took? And tell me what is the, yeah, like what are the steps and then what is your decision? Uh, this one here? No, up on the blue, uh, blue line of labels. Boards, okay. Yep. Then I do straight boards. Okay. And then? And then, then I just uh, chose the one I wanted. Wait, which one do you want? Mm -hmm. You didn't actually choose one. <laughs> There's lots of skateboards here. <laughs> so, like, um, <coughs> yours, yours is like this exploratory seeking. And if you see on the side, there's all kinds of characteristics you can choose from. Uh, you can choose the who makes it or the size. By the length of the material, I don't know what this is. Mm. <laughs> but anyway, um, and even the, f the first choice was also what kind of board do you want? Do you want a long board or a cruiser or a skateboard or a wavy wave board and a snowboard? So but you decided a skateboard. Okay. And then, um, I mean, if you're actually going to make a purchase, you certainly want to get what you want. You don't want to get anything. Like, it's not good to just pick the first one, say, OK, I'm going to buy this one. Because you don't know if that has all the characteristics you want. So um, usually, this type of searching uh, should uh, take advantage of uh, you trying to, f to learn something about the product that you're buying. Yeah. Um, when I chose, I chose the longboard because I think it's good to try around, but I know nothing about it. So I, um, okay. like, so I went for uh, here when you see the popularity, the drop down thing on the right. Yeah. I would chose by price because I don't have that much money. Okay. And I chose if you go a little bit more down, uh, no, on the side, yeah. And then the mindless radio 2 or something because I would say I could pay up to 1000 uh, this one? No, uh, the one two up. There you go. To, uh, this one. Uh, just click on that one because I think that's the yeah, price okay. wise. And I read the uh, comment reviews mm -hmm. from the other buyers mm -hmm. and chose that that may be a good place to start. Okay. So, yes, that's, that's the intention of this exploratory searching. And that's what uh, usually e-commerce sites try to support. They want to support that you learn something about the products. They don't want it to be confusing because they don't want you to go someplace else. They want you to get the answers there. And, um, and you get to, to search by different options, by different categories. So that was one way to do that. Okay, how's it going with Molde Shino? Yeah, to find the releasing of the movies, uh -huh. uh, we follow three steps. Okay. Yes. So first, was it a problem that this is not in English? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't even know if they have so English the on this site. One. The first one, you have to go to this page. Yeah. The second one is go to Colombia Filme. Okay. And then the third one is uh, finding uh, Find Hobbit. Hobbit or okay. And here's Hobbit. Yes, and then click on the information. Well, no, actually, no, the, no, the no, date no. is right there, so yeah. it's all right. So, um. We know how. Yeah, that gives you reviews. Yeah. But basically, um, mm, let's go back to this one. 
this tells you the date when it's showing. And as far as prices go, well, this is like a 3D film. So depending on if you see 3D or 2D, it's going to be a different price. And I don't know what their standard price is for a 3D film. Um, but like, they don't have any 3D films right now, so you can't tell. But it looks like their price for 2D films is is 110. But then if um, it's a 3D film, maybe it's more. I don't know. So, but um, the the steps for known seeking is that you know what you're looking for from the start. And they should make the information um, very clear in the labels in terms of how to find that information. So that's supposed to be the easiest one, but it's also the most narrow. Okay. Now, the indiscriminate uh, drifting, yeah, you had the hardest uh, search. What did you find? Mm-hmm. So we went to uh, job.no. Okay. So you went to job.no. Mm. Mm. Or did you go to like Google or how did you? Google. You went to Google. Okay. I don't know. I just put an N-O. And then you put job. Job, job with two Bs or one? B and then N O or Norway. Norway. Okay. So what is the first thing you notice about this is that there's seventy six million hits. Okay. Maybe some of this is relevant, maybe a lot of it isn't relevant. So when you're doing something like this is very broad searching. Um, did, was there any particular site that you looked at? Like on the, uh, after you did this, did you look at any particular site? Uh, yes, we found the uh, overseas.com. Uh, okay. One word. Okay, so this is not uh, Norway, but I guess you can put in Norway. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, the what did you put in? Uh, we choose a city. The city? Mm. Okay. And then? And, uh, did you put any keyword in? Yes, uh, manager. Manager. Okay, that's it. Hmm. Um, did you find anything? Uh, yes, but it's not the same. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Okay, so, um, um, but with the indiscriminate uh, searching, uh, first you start very wide and you use uh, iterative approaches. So you might start uh, searching for a very general area and then um, you maybe search within that because you found like a specific site that you search within and you're searching within a region. And then at some point you might even interview people and ask questions. So that's just, it's just to point out that there's different approaches that you take depending on what you're searching for. Oh, here we go. Okay. So um, this is also <coughs> to show that uh, this is known item seeking and this is a few good things as a bigger area, exploratory seeking. And then exhaustive search is even larger. 
but the things that you find that are relevant for you may be a small subset. So you have, when you have known item seeking, this uh, relevancy and the hits are, are close to each other. But when you have exploratory seeking, there may only be some of these things that are, are relevant to you. <coughs> and when you have this broad search, there may be even fewer things that are relevant to you. And the refinding is tagging something if you think you need it again. So usually with, um, with organization systems, <coughs> there's a trade-off between um, precision and recall. So if you want to find everything, um, <coughs> then um, you usually get uh, less precision and greater recall. Whereas if you want to find the right thing, you get more precision and less and less uh, recall. So this is, you, you, you find exactly what you're looking for, but maybe you don't find everything. And this is, you find everything, but maybe not exactly what you're looking for. And exploratory seeking and known item seeking are somewhere in between these two. Um, another important point is about information seeking behavior. It's a combination of uh, integrating different phases. I'm doing a search, and then when you get to, like, when you got to this skateboard page, then you started browsing on the page to see what you're looking for. And then uh, maybe at some point you need to ask questions. So if you're <coughs> not sure about like if you were looking about a study program, you might end up calling up the school and asking about the study program, <laughs> as well as uh, just using the information on the website. So it's a combination of uh, searching, browsing, and asking questions. And the iterations mean you do this in several steps. So in the example here, they use the internet portal. Uh, you browse the departmental organization for the department that you need and say it's human resources. And then under human resources, you browse the main page for <coughs> the topic that you need, which is policies and procedures. And then you search policies and procedures uh, <coughs> to get the information that you need about international travel. And then you ask for help at the end if something's not clear. So this just shows that there can be several iterations of searching and browsing. Um, <coughs> so you're, you're browsing the information on a page, browsing information on a page, and then searching, maybe using keyword search and then asking for help. Uh, so this is this combination of searching and browsing is sometimes called berry picking. And um, <coughs> after you search, you can search, you can browse a subcategory. And after you browse, you can do a search. So you can go in between the two steps. So if someone here is searching for <coughs> baseball, and then they get this page. And then they can browse to see if the topics that they're looking for. And after you find the topic that you're looking for, you can search on that topic and get more information. Okay. Um, uh, this is to point out what are the different elements or parts of an information architecture. And the chapters that they're coming up will be talking about organization systems, navigation systems, search systems, and labeling systems. In particular, we talk about these two in chapters five and six. <coughs> so organization systems just so that in general are about how you put things in different categories, how you chunk the information so that you can find stuff later. So you can uh, group things by subject or chronologically, or you can do it by task. So there's different ways of grouping information. And then <coughs> the navigation systems are what, what are in place to help people move through the entire content of the site to be able to browse and look for information. And then the search system is um, allowing users to uh, search for specific content, maybe using a query in, in, or an index, an SQL query, 
the LRN index. And then labeling systems is how you describe the different categories. So how do you put names on the different categories that people that you group the content underneath? Okay. Yes. Uh, when you're talking about labeling, is mm -hmm. that can that also be a uh, menu? Yes. The men the men top menu you have different kind of choices. Yes. Like service and uh, context and so on. Yes. So that's, there's different types of the way you name the menus. Yes. That's a navigation aid. Uh, that's a labeling. That's or, la that's yes. Also, that there's also, name. yeah, there's also can be labeling within the content of the page. So you can have like uh, category labels on the page. But we're going to talk about that in the coming chapter. So uh, labeling does, it describes the categories, the way you group information. So if I'm looking for a skateboard <coughs> and I have different kinds of skateboards underneath that category, I might have a category that's called, that's labeled skateboard. And under skateboard, I have longboard, cruiser, something else, I don't know. But anyway, these are also labels. So that how you group the information underneath those labels is how it helps people to find the information. Yeah. Um. One part of the uh, the exercises that was uh, uh, asked, it was asked for uh, um, among other things uh, local navigation, mm -hmm. but instead of links for local uh, local navigation, there was ads instead of. You have global navigation and mm -hmm. you have local. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. instead of local navigation, there was ads. And is there a name on that? Ads, like ads. A ads, ads for uh, companies to sell things. Um, I think the local. I'm not really sure what you're referring to, but I need to. Yes, if you have a web page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have a global navigation on the top. Mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, on 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 the left side, you have some categories yes. usually you can choose from yes. in that uh, yes. uh, local navigation. But instead of having local navigation, there were, there were ads instead. Yeah, but usually local navigation navigates you within the web page. It doesn't take you to outside the web page. So that uh, might be something different. Um, Is there a name on that, so on ads? Uh, um, there's probably a name. <laughs> Do you know where you got it from? I believe it was the, the chapter five. You made okay. a to that. Uh, Then you have uh, local navigation, but you also see ads in the middle for net and software and uh, Windows and Office. But this is all part of Microsoft. So this is not taking you outside the website. It's all part of the internal website. Of the internal, yeah. yeah. 
So those are local navigation aids. Um, but I can, I can ask you in that email maybe. Yeah, okay. Because I don't see any examples of this. Because <coughs> we, we will talk about navigation in the next lecture. Because we'll get to that chapter in the next yeah. lecture. But there's um, like on page 128, you see that it's global navigation and local navigation. And then there's contextual navigation. Yeah. <coughs> and sometimes the contextual navigation can take you to other places that are not part of the internal website. So they you might have info. Yeah, they can do that. Okay. So, but it's <coughs> usually a, like an e-commerce site. <coughs> they want to keep you on their web page. They don't want you to go somewhere else. So, um, yeah, they're just going to give you aids to find other pieces of information that's on their website. So, okay. <coughs> okay, so yeah, this is kind of like an overview for all of the <coughs> information architecture components in the that we will talk about in the whole book. So, like, this is chapter five, and this is chapter six, and this is chapter seven, and then there's other information later on. So. Um, in addition to the main categories, there's different aids that usually are helping each of these categories. So you have browsing aids, which um, assists the organization system, and um, like a site-wide and local navigation site maps. And then you have search aids, like a qu query language and uh, like SQL queries that uh, will help in the searching. And then you have content and task age, like headers and embedded links uh, that help with the labeling. <coughs> and then there are invisible components like a, like a vocabulary that may be a set of terms that can be used in searching. So there's different types of aids that help each of these, these categories. So you have, um, yeah. Okay. Um, I wasn't going to talk about these examples because I really wanted to get into chapters five and six, and I know that these are talked about in the in the last uh, set of notes. So um, these are just examples that you can read through that are part of the chapters three and four. Like uh, different elements on the web page help answer these questions, like where am I and how do I search for it? And they're kind of mapped up to how the different parts of the web page help to answer these questions. Okay, okay I think uh, we'll, we'll take a break here and then when we come back, we'll get started on the next chapter rather than, because I wasn't really going to review all of chapters three and four. So. Okay. Um, it's more like these are just examples. <coughs>